Hey there everyone, this is Cass with SCNS Live. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to check out the video version of this, you can check it out on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, all at SCNS Live. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Welcome to an all-new episode of SCNS Live, the super cool nerd show. My name is Bad Moon Pie, but I don't do this show by myself. <laughs> that was a good impression. <laughs> I have other people with me, and on my right. Hi, it's Rob, the one-handed bandit. I have Rob, the one-handed bandit. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another... Wait, no, that's not right, is it? That was my... Bastardization of Jason's <laughs> line. I am a uh, cast, otherwise known as Moon Moon Pie, and I have this new toy that Jason got. I'm gonna hold the whole show. She feels powerful. Yeah. And then further down, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Nathan. I go by Near. I was also on the Alternate Heads podcast. Near. Uh, yeah. Far. And then back behind the board, making things look, you know, acceptable. The tugging on wires, trying not to delete the whole thing is yeah. we have Jason the X. I feel as I was mocked at the beginning of this show. You were, yeah, so absolutely. good for and you. I, I'm not happy about it. Also, I left my story uh, image up while I was doing that. So Come yeah, on, I, I'm man. not happy about uh, about the mocking. This is a very serious show. Get used to it. If y'all could uh, treat, it, treat it as something. What is wrong with my damn mic? How does Cora do this? Yeah, it was contractual when we were going to do it at his house with his camera at his studio with his camera that he would have to have some position on the show and like he doesn't running really, the damn show. really work hosting it but apparently he can't really work producing it either you know what screw this i'm going to drink <laughs> <laughs> good, luck. good luck you bastards <laughs> i don't want to do both anyway tonight we're talking about a bunch of stuff we're going to do some QuakeCon stuff we're going to do some sdcc stuff but we're going to kick it off with some super cool nerd news are we starting with my story we're starting with my story i don't even care i'm just gonna flip my pages i had a different story but guess what we have overwatch news and overwatch league news so of course i'm doing that today Blizzard officially announced what has been leaked for weeks, if not months, that Stage 4 of Overwatch League competition is going to include a 2-2-2 two, two, two roll lock. Two tanks, two healers, two DPS. This is to change up a omnipresent meta throughout the first three stages called GOATS, which is go all tanks and supports. We haven't seen damage dealers very much. So they're fixing that. But really the big news was that along with that, they're also on the PTR as of today. They're rolling out a 222 lock and roll Q for all of competitive. This is something people have been clamoring for since, you know, season two. And I think we're in season, what, 17? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Some people are super excited. Some DPS players are super excited as they will finally be able to queue up just to play damage dealing heroes that they love. Other people who tend to play tanks and supports are excited not to have five damage dealers in their queue along with them to play impossible comps, scream for heals, and not have any tanks. So that's live on the PTR. They've already announced that you will do five placements to get like a, an SR or ranking in each role uh and they'll go from there they said this is kind of a work in progress obviously there will have to be balance changes along with this to certain heroes be a lot easier to balance if there's a limit on how many say healers there can be so should be fun i'm pretty excited a little bit sad to see some of my crazy comps go by the wayside 
That's yeah. Overwatch League. I'm a little bit sad because I I, I was a fan of uh, of goats as a meta, and I did like I personally I did like somber goats. But I also I love at the end of certain matches in the Overwatch League, you would see uh, it all of a sudden switch from uh, goats meta to uh, you know here's a bastion and here's three or four different healers and here's uh, all so all these crazy different comps that we would get at the end of certain games in Overwatch League. I'm a little bit sad to see that go and away. Main takes going to Tracer to get back to exactly. the point to try and challenge it. That was fun. It is a little sad to see that they announced some weird stuff. I think they announced it. They leaked some weird yeah. stuff before earlier in this week. Like they will be sitting in an order mm. to tank, like in the same order every time, which is a little bit That's... weird that they would force that on them. And also they'll be able to switch roles between like maps. Okay. But not within games. So some crazy rules would be a little, little bit of adjusting. And have we heard about anything about surprise mechanics? Uh, I don't think there was anything released on that today. It's an ongoing yeah, discussion. Wow. Okay. I think you pretty much have to throw something at yourself, Jason. Yeah, yeah I'll work on that. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. You Overwatch players, how do we feel? How do we feel about that? You're, are you... Are you you're I, not an I, Overwatch I did, guy? So I own Overwatch. Uh -huh. I just never actually got into playing it. Oh, sure. Nice. So I played it once, and my friend made fun of me the entire time. So That's fair. I'm emotionally scarred. Pretty part of the course. I, I personally don't it. play Overwatch. I played Paladin on the Switch because that's all I have until uh, until Blizzard Activision puts Overwatch on there. I'll switch over. Uh, I do uh, watch my buddy Sir Pixelot play uh, once a week. So. Do they have role locking or anything like it in Paladin? Yeah, yeah. Basically, Paladins is like Overwatch, um, and they just came out with a game called uh, um, Royale something. It's like a battle royale game. Um, it looks like uh, Fortnite, but it doesn't play like that. And you, when you die, you don't die. You turn into a chicken. You have twenty seconds to like get to safety and then you respawn into yourself and then if you get shot if that happens three times then you finally die that's crazy that happens to me in real life yeah she's mm -hmm. on her last life people so <laughs> yeah, be careful it's, it is a bummer you know you can drop that trident at any time you're gonna hold on to that thing the entire show on. she made a commitment yes we, we we have a plan any god can drop their powers yeah but i'm not going to what do you think of the roll lock you're mccree guy um I'm just gonna roll with the punches on it. I, honestly, I've been I've been playing so many online games, and I'm used to patch notes and everything. There's nothing that I can do to change this. Yeah, but does it excite you to not have to queue into a role you don't feel like playing at the time? Well, because I, I I'll play all of the classes. I'll right. play support. I'll play tank. I, I guess I'm just really adaptable on it, so it's not really that bad to me i don't mind because i i have my favorites in each class mm -hmm. but yeah you know what if if that's what i feel like playing that day and that that is kind of depending on what i want to play at the time yeah you know what okay like i'm a little bit excited about that because i'm a true like flex and that means 90 percent of the time i play tank or healer maybe 98 percent of the time so like every once in a while i want to play tracer or sombra or Fara or hanzo i love playing hanzo whatever I, didn't, I haven't. That's crazy. I hadn't actually considered that. That what? I could play DPS. <laughs> I could play. I could just like play a DPS if I wanted to play a DPS. I like the idea that they're going to separate the SR for each of them. So yeah. if I'm playing DPS, I'm not playing like at a way worse level than the rest of my team because I'm a better tank or support. Anyway, we'll see how it works. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to play uh, unranked Sombra and then Golds. Uh, like Moira. <laughs> that will also be helpful. What have you got for us this week? Well, it's about Jason's favorite new game. I'm Marvel dead Friday. Ultimate Alliance comes out tonight, midnight. Hello. It's finally hitting the streets. And at Comic-Con, they revealed the, um, what is it? The uh, expansion packs. And uh, August 30th, they're going to drop free DLC of Cyclops and Colossus. 
It's dope. So yeah, and uh, it is twenty dollars, and there is no. Um, you can't buy these DLCs separately like you can with uh, Smash Brothers or Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, you have to get the expansion pack for 20 bucks. Uh, the next one is going to be Marvel Knights, which is going to have Blade, The Punisher, and uh, Mor uh, Morbius from uh, Spider-Man, the Dracula, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, they also announced that Loki is going to be a playable character. Nice. So, and so that's going to be cool. So what they're going to do, they're going to do Marvel Knights, then they're going to do X-Men, and then they're ending the DLC with the first comic book Stan Lee ever wrote, and that is the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. So we get to be all of those wonderful characters. So that will be great. Um, if you guys uh, got your pre-orders, awesome. Uh, I know that Jason, he has pre-ordered it months in advance, right when they announced it, what, at E3 or whatever it was. I keep looking at the screen over here, and it won't work yet. Hey man, midnight, bro. Just midnight. Midnight. You're so, going yeah. to work exhausted, aren't you? Oh, I actually have a test tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. But yeah, Jason will be streaming that live right here. Um, At uh, midnight. From midnight <laughs> until six o'clock. Not whenever you to sleep for tomorrow. This so, is one of the times I'm about to prove to you guys my self control. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, oh yeah, this would be the time to start. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can watch Jason live stream. I might even come over for the weekend and do some couch co-op with him. We never know. You should uh, do some couch side seat driving. Be like, do that, do that. You try to be that's crazy. My job. Seat yeah. okay, that's what I do. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so awesome. if you're excited, also Fire Emblem is coming soon. There is a bunch of stuff that's been going on with that. Although I haven't been paying attention because I'm just too stoked for a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and whatnot. So make sure you guys get that. Also, Marvel Alliance Ultimate 3 will be Nintendo Switch Lite compatible. So if you're Ooh, thinking about okay. getting one of those for the uh, $200, uh, the $200 yeah. then go do it. Although they're not going to make a Marvel Alliance uh, Switch Lite version that's only going to come with that Pokemon Sword and Shield, so sorry. Bummer. I don't know. Maybe if we save up for seven years, we could get one of them. Share it. We'd have to trade off. Cass, what have you got? All right, so. Um, Smooth. This weekend uh, is San Diego Comic-Con, and there will be plenty of fans that are lining up to see their favorite actors, writers, and uh, everything in Hall H, which is the big hall, San Diego, every year. Some fans are going to be missing a couple of writers because uh, it was announced today that David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, the writers of Game of Thrones, are skipping their panel at Comic-Con for the first time ever. Uh, Game of Thrones, the most recent, the, la the final season, didn't quite go... The way a lot of us had imagined. It was basically the Dexter. It was, a, it was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. Yeah, it was Just a train wreck. Like, and uh, they were It was like people, lost. Yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of people, myself included, that were kind of looking forward to the panel at San Diego just to see what they said. And I'm a little bit bummed that we're not going to be able to see what the writers have to say for themselves. Oh, my, my, my question is, are you regretful that you wasted this much time investing in game of thrones just to end in the garbage that it did no um there was plenty of the show that i i deeply deeply enjoyed and there's the decisions and the uh twists and turns of the last season i have no doubt are in the book they're just better done um, or will be in the book whenever it is actually finished uh i i will say um they did they did announce that it was due to production schedules that they were dipping out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be able to see uh, Arya, Varys, Bran, Jamie, Sam, Davos, and Grey Worm all at the panel. Uh, my, uh, my hope is that the fans do not kind of we'll attack raid them. them. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I they don't will. Think they you, will. you can't really blame the actors for what happened. They exactly. just read what's on the... What's on the scripts? Exactly. 
Uh, but I, I am a little bit bummed that we don't get to see the train wreck that would have been oh, yeah. that panel. I was looking forward to that too, because yeah. um, like you were talking about the time invested, I watched it all. I binge watched it basically. You like binge watched I the whole binged thing? watched it. So I had a bunch of like seasons that I was given, and then I was like, oh, you know, this show's good, but I hadn't gotten around to it. Yeah. So I finally picked it up, and then I watched it with my wife, and we just binge watched it over the course of like two months. So everything was phenomenal when you kept doing the lead up. I'm like, oh, man, this is great. Can't wait to get home from work, watch the new episode of Game of Thrones. It's going to be fantastic. And then we watched all of season eight at the same time. And so we were we were disappointed too, but I would have liked to have seen what was going to go on at Comic-Con, just yeah. like everybody else. But you know, it's like you said, I can't I can't blame the actors for what they had to read. I mean, exactly. Right. I mean, they weren't thrilled about it. Oh, yeah. Either. Um. Yeah, I only have one thing to say about all of it. Which was it? Which camera, Jason? Which camera? Okay. Nobody ever wants to talk to writers, directors, etc. The one time you guys could have showed up as like as a production person, like if they want you there, then you show up show up just the once and like take your whatever your hits or whatever it was not going to be pretty this it was wasn't no, no. this was a no-win situation it wasn't but be a grown-up and get dressed down once if you you might have learned something it, kevin smith is going to his hall age you know to show off jane and silent bob it was a if I was in any way, shape, or form responsible for that last season of Game of Thrones, I probably wouldn't show up either. But I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> you also have to realize that other yes. people that are going to be there are going to be concerned about other things that they're doing, too, since it's the one of the first seasons that they kind of did alone. I mean, they're are they still in charge of Star Wars right now? The next ones that are coming out? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if I you're thought... going... The, a lot of the Star Wars stuff got put on hold, though. Um, after, I think there really are some reevaluations going on. After Solo. Maybe that's what the production issue was, is they realized that if they showed up to this panel, for sure they were going to get fired off their new job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where, like, with, when it came to Star Wars, they kind of halted all of the side stories. Yeah. But the, they were oh, in charge. The yeah, the, oh. they were in charge of the next set of trilogy. Just, oh, I was thinking of uh, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, no, yeah. it's... But it, it's one of the well. Ryan basically was told to no longer do that either. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but, yep. Yeah, but with the new trilogy, they're in charge of it. So everyone who was so invested in Game of Thrones and just now you have a bigger fan base like Star Wars. Eh, bigger, but it's, you have you have Star Wars now yeah. that goes back who knows how long now. Oh, I, but, I heard that the new trilogy is going to be as the Old Republic. I, I just know that it's completely separate from the Skywalker stuff, yeah. period, which is, from, could be fine. From what I've heard is that it is going to be Knights of the Old Republic, which was one of the best uh, Star Wars video games ever made. So they, uh, so fan, that's what fans wanted after the Skywalker trilogy uh, uh, storyline, and I, they got it. Probably. So, That's what we've heard. They haven't. I don't think there's official confirmation on it. I'm hoping for some wrong. information at some point soon yeah i am wondering if uh star if star wars uh as an entity was hoping that some fans would carry over uh with the creators and what they think now should be interesting i mean yeah. be a lot of stuff coming out should be fun to watch like get the popcorn basically yeah, yeah. near what have you got i have uh going along with san diego comic-con in one of the panels they were talking about terminator Mm -hmm. So today hey. at a, the Terminator panel, you know, you had a, everybody kind of reprising, like reprising the roles. And then they announced that uh, Edward Furlong, who played John Connor in Terminator 2, will also be reprising his role. So I'm now even more excited for this new movie. <laughs> You'll see it. It looks pretty cool. He doesn't look quite as Terminator-y as he used to. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> he might have to bring. He didn't look like much of a Terminator in Terminator 2. Snot nose run who had to get rescued. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, we'll we'll see where it goes. It, it's, we'll see where it goes. It's you, fun to see original. Like you, you've got all of like the original people coming back. I mean, you have I can't remember her name now, but the original Sarah Connor coming back. Linda Hamilton. That, yeah, I had it and then I lost it. But I was yeah. like, yeah. yeah, she looks yeah. Really <laughs> she looks like was, a BA in that trailer. I always think Linda Carter, and I'm like, that's not right. Yeah, that's not right. It's her twin coming back. <laughs> 
I mean, then you got James Cameron coming back. I mean, it's been what thirty yeah. years since he's done anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so he came back and he announced it. Yeah, so, but then I mean, there's all those blue people in the new Terminator. Yeah, you know, Speaking about like, re-releases. I find it weird. I was mentioning that to my wife. She's like, "Why does Edward Furlong come back?" I was like, "But Linda Hamilton's coming back." She's like, "Well, she's different." Of course like, she's different. She's still cool. <laughs> she's like... But... I'll admit, when Linda stepped out in the trailer <clears throat> with oh, the yeah. smoking gun, with the shades on, like, just walking tall, I was like, thank you. Your <laughs> little fanboy heart thing. I, my fanboy heart. Loved it was it like place. your childhood walking back out Oh, I always thought like she was a badass in yeah. Terminator too. so <laughs> to see her step out, with, like I said, just walks out of the smoke like... This is my normal every day at the office. <laughs> I when never I, get to walk out of smoke. If I'm when sad. I was growing up, I found a box of Terminator 2 trading cards mm -hmm. and they had stickers and my whole desk, I had this like back panel. I just had it all faced with like Terminator 2, uh, two, two stickers. That was like, an awesome back splash. Yeah. Like, I love it. So like I'd do my homework and I'd just see Sarah Connor and... Or with the guns. It's like Linda Sarah Connor had, tells you to Linda do had, your Linda the guns. Exactly. She's doing the chin outs when they first mm. introduced the Terminator. So, yeah. Gotta get smart to bring down Skynet. It's pretty just... on that. I just love strong I, I do like the, uh, I do like Gabriel Luna is in this. Oh, yeah. I, I think he's a really good actor. I really like Ghost Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider. I'm so glad they're, I'm so, yeah, I'm so glad they're bringing him back for Ghost Rider, but yeah, I've seen him in a little bit of a different role and uh, he was tweeting out and everything today, so. Yeah. I like seeing older, like, older actors so being badasses on camera. I mm -hmm. think that's cool. I mean, like, you have Harrison Ford just killing it, but, like, the 150. You know what I mean? He's still like, crashing planes and walking away. Older yeah, women is good, too, yeah. who are like, I'm still killing it. What? Jason, what do you got? Oh, God, why do we have to stop with mine? Okay. Um, unfortunately, my story is uh, a bit of a tragedy. A uh, well-known animation, well, they're, they're well-known in Japan, the Kyoto Animation. Uh, they've done a couple of, uh, a couple, a, a bit of work in the States. They worked on Pokemon for a little bit, mainly just sequences of Pokemon. But they were the first real animation studio to make it big outside of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been, uh, they started in 1981. Um, unfortunately, a deranged individual, a 41 year old man, uh, was seen outside the building putting some accelerant, and he set the building on fire. Unfortunately, 33 people have lost their lives. There's about 36 people um, injured as well. The company did say they were getting some death threats. The individual has been taken into custody. Uh, unsubstantiated claims say he was screaming something about copyright infringement. So, um, yeah, the uh, director of CEO did address yesterday. They've been getting these threats, but no one expected this tragedy to happen. Um, it's, it's a shame. They've seen some real success. I've seen some of their work. It, like, it's a little bit far and few between their work, but they're a great studio. And uh, for people to uh, have lost a life in such a fashion, it's, it's a very sad day. Um, you know, uh, hopefully they bounce back from it. There's no way of uh, people who lost their life bouncing back from the studio as a whole. Gets by. They've actually been ones that's actually treated their animators fairly as well. Yeah. They're changing some of their practices. So it's one reason I kind of admired them and was hoping that they would get more work in the States and get their work more there. But yeah, um, you know, Thoughts go out to everybody that's affected by that, and you know, it should never come to this. It it should. And just look out for each other, you know. Try and keep an eye out for anything crazy, and try and get some help for each other. Try and just stay aware. That is nuts. I know it's a downer. That's why I didn't want to end with that one. So you yeah. should have told me before the broadcast. Sorry. Well, that's the end of super cool nerd news. Let's move on to something a little bit more. Upbeat. There. Which is anything. Well, I don't know how upbeat. Um, no. Uh, a couple of things that we did want to mention from San Diego yeah, Comic Con that, already, uh, that have already happened. And uh, we saw the first trailer for the brand new, beautiful Broadway musical movie. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, I've got to see and this. I have a, I have a boy, movie. howdy. It is just directly in the middle of the uncanny valley it is so <laughs> creepy who is this movie for it's so creepy they decided to go kind of the broadway style with the very so like anthropomorphized cats oh my god okay yeah uh, 
I, I, I don't even I just know what to compare it, it to. You too? I just pulled it up. It's so creepy. And uh, we hear Jennifer Hudson singing Memory, which she does very well. It's, uh, I, I, it's the best song in the musical. It's who is great. this movie for? I don't oh. know. The Broadway people don't usually oh, no. like cats. <laughs> and people outside of it, like, <laughs> who are... It's not to make a new generation fall in love with cats, I don't think, because, like, oh, yikes. No. That's a yikes for me, dog. <laughs> I'm going to need to stop. Oh, uh, full stop. <laughs> it looks, it looks like a bunch of furries got a budget. Oh, yeah. Wait, and is that, that Taylor Swift? Yeah, that's yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift, James Corden, Rebel Wilson, Dame Judy Dench, Idris Elba. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I gotta go to Twitter. I I'm mean, the memes are going to make the movie almost yeah. worth it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm out with t -Swift. I might have to go you, see it. <laughs> You're out? Oh, like I'm out. super discount day. And during the middle of the day, so yeah. when I step out, I'm oh. not scared. Hello, oh. Cinemark Tuesday. There we go. Oh, keep going. I oh, mean, we really fly no, in here. This is going to be a free option on the little plane screen. <laughs> the day it comes oh. out. No, thank you. Uh, we, can't, we can't put that on there because little kids will Crying. Okay. I'm not gonna sit with kids. It's like the 2000 dinosaur movie, but with people. Like it's just, it's so creepy. Mm -hmm. Compared to that, I might just watch Howard the Duck again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. It's great. That's fair. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Just no. I'm it's actually, like... I'm actually getting you a preview <laughs> for that right now. So okay. go ahead, please. I'm pretty sure it's the kid from Toy Story, like the messed up one next door. He grew <laughs> up it? and he made these. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm pushing the image of I believe this is Taylor, Taylor Swift right like, there. Like no, just no, you guys. Okay. Uh, like, at first, I I kind of when I was watching part of that trailer, it looks okay. But then they it's did a just really. Because they were in the dark. Yeah, it was. They were faded. It was dark. I understood what was happening, and then they got really close to the camera. Oh, that is Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's... Oh man. Boy. That's, oh. oh, that's rough. So speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog, do you think that's where this is going? They're going to be like, okay, right. like no. we heard you. Too too late. Late. I have I have faith in them now. It it watching Sonic the Hedgehog the first trailer, I wasn't happy right either. but they learned but they learned so do you think this movie they're gonna be like maybe not like that then yeah i i think so i mean have you seen ben schwartz instagram i they not have, really. so ben schwartz has an insta uh has his instagram and on there he teased a little bit of the the sonic stuff the first thing they showed was gloves so nice. they, they okay. are they're 100 so percent listening so they said hey we pushed the movie back and then they had sonic's hand and the first thing they showed was the glove which made me realize okay they're listening I'm okay with waiting a few months to see this movie because of the fact that they're they're listening to us. Me too. Are you excited? And that's what I'm asking. Is, is, that, is that what they're going to do wife? on Cats? Do you think Cats is gonna listen going to, to us as have well? as good a reception no. No. where they're like, they're like, okay, we heard you. Yeah, that's not happening. You think they're just gonna barrel through? There's, there's with too it? there's too many there's too many high stars in there now that there's there's no way anyone's gonna, gonna be like go it's there. gonna be fine yeah this is yeah. done We're, this is happening it's, uh, it's it's over with no one's gonna want to see right. it um that's not the only trailer that we got we did get a trailer that actually looks really exciting i think you want to talk about it yeah uh it yeah. <laughs> wanted to talk about it oh it yes yeah. it i'm so joke. i'm not i'm not a big horror movie guy uh I, most of the reasons i don't like horror movies is i don't like that they rely on jump scares I like more of a. <laughs> you and I need to have a much longer conversation. I, I, I hate that it's a. Okay, my body has a natural reaction to you putting something in front of my face in a loud sound. I, I'm not. That's not scary to me. That's just me reacting. Uh, I like a, a movie all about tone. So I generally don't watch horror movies because I am a small child. But I'll go and see so one for the story. Summer, then? No. But, <laughs> but when it comes to like a decent story that actually interests me, then I wouldn't go see it. So I went and saw the first it with like you know I think it was my sister or something like that. We went and saw it and I loved I it. I saw it with my sister. Yeah, my sister was like, "You should go see this with me," and I was like, "Okay, fine." And we went and saw it and I loved it and I have rewatched it multiple times now. My wife won't watch it with me, but I will rewatch it. So good, it's so, so good. exuberant, yeah. and it's it was like phenomenal. The kid actors yeah. were great. It's just. It was a phenomenal movie. And one, then... one thing I didn't like was that the chubby kid didn't get with the girl in the end. 
Like she was, he wrote her that letter, and then she was like, "Nope, I'm gonna go with the skinny guy." Just haven't read the books yet. So. <laughs> that's the whole. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I know, but go still, ahead. you know, this new movie definitely looks like it is uh, <clears throat> keeping with kind of the style oh, yeah. of the original. Mm -hmm. The new movie. What? It. it? It, it is. It is keeping in town with it. It looks, it's... it looks amazing. And I, and I bet you that Stephen King is super happy about that. Oh, yeah. I bet. Like, the first trailer they released, they already had me interested. Then the right. second trailer they released, I was... I can't believe he does that crazy eye thing just with his eye. Yeah. Which one? Like... Oh, with the... Uh, yeah. The, yeah, where he can, the, like... the actor does that with his eye. That's just uh, something Skarsgård. he can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's he's crazy good. At this point, I'm just convinced they threw makeup on him and he did everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you just go you off, can, I guess. You can I fly, so right? He's, he's, like, he's, yeah. got a, he's got that presence and he's a good actor to the point where, have you seen like the interview with Bill Hader about how they had to talk to him about his <laughs> scared face? Because he laughs yeah. when he's He's like, I laugh when I'm nervous, scared. okay? I can't help it. He's yeah. scary. It's funny, too, because in the entire show of Barry, he's nervous most of the time, but he, he's acting nervous. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of trailers released today. We got our first trailer for Top Gun, which looks mm -hmm. kind of eh. I didn't, I didn't see that Maverick. trailer. It, how does it look? It, it looks like a typical it. like uh, uh, movie for Top Gun. You know. Top Gun people will be happy. Yeah. Okay. That's all happy. we need. So, like, my dad. Like, it's been so long. I thought I had no so it feelings. It looks like a, a typical Tom Cruise movie trailer. I, I honestly dad. thought I had no feelings about this this movie. I'm like, ah, eh, Top Gun, never. But when I saw a trailer, like, okay, now I remember what made Top Gun. Fun. That's what I'm wondering. Like, so now I'm on board. Yeah. Do we... we also got an early trailer today. Uh, Kevin Smith dropped Jane Silent Bob reboot. And give a little bit of story. Harley Quinn is playing Jason Mewes, uh, um, Jay's daughter, which is kind of be kind of interesting. Kevin Smith's daughter's name is Harley. Yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah, uh, I knew Robin. that, I was and like, then Margaret I forgot. Robin's playing whose daughter? No, yeah. I knew that, and then okay, I forgot, okay, okay. and I'm like, what? Yeah, yes. Harley is Quinn this really Smith. the first movie that we've seen her? No, she was in a movie a few years ago called Yoga Hosers with Johnny Depp's daughter. When she she's actually been in a lot of Kevin Smith's movies. She played the she played uh, uh, she played Silent Bob as a baby in uh, Jan Silent Bob oh, the first movie. Yeah. She was a little girl in um, that movie with uh, Jennifer Lopez and um, oh uh, Geely? No, no, okay, no. Uh, 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 Jersey Girl. Oh, equally as bad. So yeah. But no, she's been in a bunch of Kevin Smith movies. She was even in Tusk, and so which that's what um, Yoga Hosers came from was a scene out of Tusk. But okay. and she's actually in, um, she's in uh, what is it? Um, uh, the the new Quentin Tarantino movie. She's, she's okay. Harley so Harley Quinn Smith once is going upon to be... a time in Hollywood. Yeah, once upon a time in Hollywood. Okay, so, so she's, she's playing she's playing Jay's Jason. daughter, okay. um, and they are doing a road show, which the, uh, Kevin did with Yoga Hosers. They're going to be at the Texas Theater here in Dallas on November 20th. Go cool. to uh, Jan go to RebootRoadShow.com for all the details for that. Um, it didn't Yoga Hosers didn't come here. It came to Houston. So I went down to Houston, saw it with my cousin, and that was that was phenomenal. They had it at uh, the Houston Improv. So, but this time they're coming through here. I'm excited to see. I'm happy that Kevin Smith and Jason Mew that he's gotten Jason Muse's help me enough to do a movie. He's yeah, and actually, movie. before this comes out, um, the uh, Jason Muse's debut uh, director movie comes out um, uh, called uh, the Muse or the Method of Muse, I think, or something like that. Something like that. The uh, the date on that uh, road show is actually uh, November second. November second, uh, Saturday. 7 to 11, uh, Texas Theater. Yeah. Yeah, and there were some other trailers too, but we've got to move on because we want to talk about Quick Con. Can I talk about all the toys I saw at SDCC? Sure. You've oh got, 30 got 30 seconds. I saw toys. Go. No. I saw toys. There. Love Man, it. That, that's next week. You toys are, toys that I want. More. I yeah. want toys. Watch <laughs> uh, also on our channel, Alternate Heads. He talks about toys a lot there from what okay, I hear. I'll, anyway. I'll talk about one one figure. Okay, go for it. We are getting uh, Thor Lebowski. Yeah. In the Marvel Legends Live. And it is the only figure that I want this year. He's in the sweatpants, the hoodie. He's got the shades on on an alternate head. 
Um, all he needs is a can of beer, but I think I have that accessory. You I notice know. the I shading have on Stormbreaker, too, where I uh, just lean it against him. Just blow it out. Yeah. Um, also, they're redoing uh, Captain America. You said one. And they have the figure turned around on the display. Brilliant. Nice. Yes. America's ass. Uh, it's beautiful. Also, okay. we have from the chat, uh, Beetlejuice 2. Apparently, something came out for Beetlejuice 2. I, I will have to say, personally, I have not seen, nor do I care. Beetlejuice? <laughs> Yeah, it's so it's so like I saw the first one like once. I, I had oh, okay. news about it like a <laughs> while know. back, but it was just it kind of fell to the wayside. Just Did nobody... Neil doing the makeup again? If she is, I would be much more interested <laughs> in seeing it. That's how I it. get her on gorgeous stuff I want to watch. Anyway, uh, Quite Con, so amazing makeup artist. Quite Con is coming up not this weekend but next weekend, Thursday through Sunday. Yes, at the wow. It is at the Gaylord, Texas. Gaylord, Texas. That's what it is. In was Grapevine, Texas. So, yeah, the Gaylord Hotel in, uh, in yeah, it's north of the airport. Uh, but we have breaking news today uh, for QuakeCon. Um, the game, one of the, uh, one of the directors at id Software, Tim Willis, is leaving id Software after QuakeCon. He posted uh, a thing on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, is he said, I have come to Texas to work with a company I idolized. And now, 24 years later, I have decided to leave id Software at the end of the month following QuakeCon. I dreamt of working at id Software before I was blessed enough to actually work here. I've been extremely lucky and lived my childhood dream and made some amazing games and helped shape the industry. I've had the best job in making the coolest, and making the coolest things ever, video games. I did it with the best people. I love the games we made at id, and I love the people I work with here. And the fans made everything worthwhile. This will be my last QuakeCon as an id software employee. QuakeCon has been an unbelievable part of my journey, and I look forward to seeing everyone and celebrating the studio and the games we have made. All of the projects are in very good hands. Id software is packed with full of amazing talent, and that will continue to develop long into the future in some of the best shooters in the world. Whatever I am and will be rooting for the whole team. After QuakeCon, I will make more of my future plans known and where I'm going and with the new exciting things I am doing. Stay tuned and thanks for everything for the last 24 years and your support. I, the guy's been there since the beginning. This is his gold watch. It's time. I yeah. Think. Well, the thing is, is that um, was it Zenimax Media acquired it ten years ago. So there's a lot of people saying that uh, they were like, "Hey, stay with us ten more years, and we'll give you that uh, that payout." And so you know, and that he and uh, you know, there's a lot of like bad press with Bethesda, with Tom Howard, and um, Fallout 76. And yeah. so, you know, they, he's probably done dealing with all of that, uh, that that nonsense. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. He's been there a long time. He yeah. might have gotten a part, he might have gotten an offer to do some, like an upstart type of thing. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, I know uh, one of the guys who was uh, one of the indie guys that helped get all the indie games onto the Switch for Nintendo. He left last year and now is working with Xbox. So yeah, like if 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 they were leaving on really bad terms from both ends, then he wouldn't be out and about at QuakeCon yeah. as part of the team still. So it's at least like right, and he might be pulling a Reggie fils you know, That's just retiring. Well, I do have some. Uh, this is QuakeCon Year of Doom. Yes, which I'm excited for Doom Eternal. Yeah, uh, oh, we know you are. <laughs> yes, uh, starting July 25th. Um, if you don't have a seat for BYOC yet, well, it's too late. Uh, yeah. Those people start lining up and getting those seats. I think BYOC sells out like the as soon as it goes on um, sale. So, uh, a couple of I... events happening. You've got, um, of course, some competition for money, but they have a quick. They have a uh, cosplay contest, which you can enter. Uh, go to the website. Because you have to like basically kind of pre-enter, but the prize for that is two thousand uh, dollars. I did look at the cosplay contest and the fan art contest. Uh, unfortunately, both of the uh, entry dates closed. have expired. Oh. Uh, they expired on June. 
June 30th. Man, I, like I was going to go office. buy a blue sweatsuit and be like a vault tryhard. <laughs> like... I didn't make it into the vault, but I thought if I put on the outfit, I could sneak in. I was just going to not wear makeup and go as one of the, uh, what are they called? But we're going to try to go for like a three-person cosplay. I don't know. Yeah. One of the Reavers? We're, uh, one of the, yeah, not, that's not what they're called, but yes. Yeah. You, what are they you called? You can't go without makeup, because if well, I go without makeup, then it's just, you know, you, wearing the same thing. It's oh, just, awkward. just awkward. One's got to go home and change. Twinkies, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, you guys look. Um, of the similar. people on the show were the ones that were most similar. similar. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys sisters? The other one, they're going to have plenty of competitions, which I wanted to go down just a little bit. Uh, in BYOC, starting Thursday, uh, June 2016, they're having Deathmatch there. Uh, clan fights. On Friday, it's going to be Quake. It's going to be the competitive game of the day. Uh, on... They're playing Quake at QuakeCon? That's yes. so crazy. Yes, yes. Can anyone explain? Oh, actually, to me? I'm sorry. Those are uh, all of those games are being played on the same day. It's uh, going to be like Quake World, Doom Two, Elder Scrolls Online, and uh, Nuclear Winner for Fallout 76. Yes, Nuclear Winner on Thursday. Um, I don't see anything for playing Doom, so we're not going to have anything for Doom Eternal as far as I'm concerned. I, I They're not the going to have a Doom Eternal like tournament. I want to play Doom Eternal. Well, that's I. We will be able to play yet. Doom. Yeah. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, you'll, because I mean, that's the whole thing is just like come play Doom Eternal. I mean, this is the 25, 25th anniversary of the original Doom, and so, and so they will be, you'll be able to play. I mean, it's gonna be just like how people will be able to play it at E3, how people I mean, will be able to play it probably. At they said there will be people playing to Doom, they didn't guarantee that all attendees will be able to play it. Yeah, we're gonna we assume that, like. Well, so we're gonna have three did. Uh huh. Yeah, and they let pretty much you know they had like open stations for people at E3. So we're mm -hmm. assuming we'll have something like that. Um, of course we're gonna be doing some interviews on the floor and everything. But there was something cool that you showed me. Want to what? show some of the shirts? Yes, um, there kind of are. Oh, I want that cat one. Cute... That's what I'm pushing live. <laughs> there are some cute shirts coming out. They're working with a bunch of charities, and one of the charities is. What is it? Dallas, Dallas Pets Alive. Dallas they, uh, Pets Alive. Um, the, what are you showing right now? The, 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 the cat, cat shirt? Too. I'm showing both of them. Okay, so the, the dog shirt is the Doom Slayer, and then the cat is your character from Rage 2. These are just so cute. And they are going to be, they're so gonna be, uh, they're gonna be $15 at the uh, QuakeCon merch table. It's a minimum $15 donation to Dallas Pets Alive, and you get that shirt. Limited. It's going to be limited supply, so get it while you can. Hopefully, I will be able to get the dog sure. one because <laughs> because we can wear it to the cats, cats premiere. <laughs> uh, the best part. Da uh, we'll think about be Dallas awful. Pets Alive. They're a really good organization here in Dallas. They will be there with the pets as well. So if you're going yeah. to think about adopting, you know, I, I heard they were, they are going to do some adoption stuff. I read. Oh, they always do. Um, it's also a very. Uh, if you're thinking about maybe. Yeah. You're not ready for a pet, but maybe can foster a pet. They always need fosters. <gasps> so if you just want to take care of some cute kittens for a while until they find a home, and then you end up just adopting one, there you go. Or or you want a puppy, and you just have them for a while and say, I love this thing, and I'm not letting it go. There you go. Now, it's a really great organization here in Dallas. Um, maybe, yeah. And uh, they, they could use all the help they could get, especially right after spring with uh, influx of pets and everything. So That's I what wanted, I like. Just wanted to plug them. There's a lot of really good community on stuff going on at this con like you can bring your gently used consoles controllers or unopened consoles controllers and games and donate them to gamers outreach which is a charity that sets up like little standalone carts in hospitals and lets kids play like while they're getting treatments and stuff to kind of distract them so they're getting dialysis or just something that takes a while and lets them Probably, play video games. Yeah, not MRIs, but uh, other kinds. Probably of... not MRIs. Just, they will also have their tabletop and um, um, tabletop and D and D area. They should want to play some games. The good D and D. I'm hoping that they have a Cyberpunk 2020. 2077. No, 2020 is the is the tabletop. Yeah, that they're, yeah, yeah. That they're basing 2020. They had last year they had demos of some uh of some tabletop games i think they had fallout which i looked at for 10 minutes and then did not understand walked away 
Uh, but yeah, yeah they have some of those the minis. And they're probably not going to have the Elder Scrolls 1 scene that they uh, plagiarized D&D. So I mean, there's a lot of stuff. D&D. No, literally, it was like word for word. Picasso <laughs> says that original. good artists borrow, great artists steal. Said that he's dead now, but like been dead for a hot minute. Uh, also, last year they had the uh, they had tabletop games there. They have a tabletop uh, library where you could check out uh, games. So you can bring your own, but you can also check out games to go play. That's what uh, me and a couple of friends did last year. We played. Uh, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, which was super fun. Um, no more Cinelinks. And the artists No more Cinelinks the... because, oh my goodness. At cons, just get super exhausted and just can't think of any movies that and exist both, ever. Both of us who have an almost encyclopedic knowledge of, uh, of movies, for movies and TV shows. Everything. Couldn't remember a single movie Nicolas Cage was in. <laughs> anyway. And let's what? not forget the uh, best no. thing about QuakeCon. It's, it's, it's the top thing. Considering that we live in uh, Texas where it's a thousand damn degrees, but inside the BYOC it's like 55 degrees. It's so nice. I went in there one time just to cool off. It's it's great. I used to do that in the server room when I was in IT. I was like, the I'll be right back. The sweat on your body literally <sighs> freezes as you walk It's in. so great. And of course, all of the massive food trucks are going to have that. Yes. And uh, uh, I'm hoping we get a, a, uh, some more look into Oasis, which is id Software's program that I think that Google Stadia is going to be using. Yeah. That they de- developed so you can play Doom uh, 2016 on your phone and tablets and whatnot. So I'm hoping that I get to see more of that because they were like, oh, yeah, uh, we're going to be, if you're signed up for the Doom Slayers thing, you'll get a, you get a look at this. Uh, later today, and I didn't see anything, and so I was really disappointed. So hopefully that happens, and because uh, I really want to see, uh, I would really, really like to play Doom sixty six on my phone. I can play Doom Doom two on my phone, so hopefully I can play Doom uh, Doom two thousand sixteen on my phone. I know we're reaching out for some beer of the weekend. We're trying, dude. We're hitting up those emails. If anybody, like, if anybody hey, out there can hey, help hey, us. hey, 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 help. Can we mm-hmm. talk to this guy? Hey, we have we have new stuff we want to play with. So we do. I want I, uh, new gear. Hopefully, I uh, I'm going to be actually out there uh, for Able Gamers. Uh, they're the uh, charity that helped Xbox create the adaptive controller. Oh, cool. And so I'm hopefully going to be talking with in software about Doom Eternal and how uh, they made uh, what they did for. Uh, disabled players to be able to play Doom on PC and consoles and whatnot, and we're going to be live streaming that on Able Gamers Twitch channel, uh, hopefully next week. So, uh, so these guys will probably be with me and drooling over what we talk about, and then I'll probably just give them the bone. It's like here you guys go. <laughs> I mean that's cool. It was really cool to start to see like a lot more publicity around that last year with Microsoft, like the different initiatives they're starting to make more and more available yeah, they're actually it. supposed to be making a controller for the, for the blind there was patents really yeah there was there was a patent uh that surfaced like two or three months ago mm-hmm. and so that should be coming out soon i think i'm going to be getting my hands on it hopefully uh i've hit up my microsoft uh person so i i don't know if i'll get it but if we do i'll talk about it my impressions on here when i come back but yeah but um, it's it'll. I think this next week is going to be really fun. Um, you know, we got a lot of things coming out this weekend this, with San Diego Comic Con, and then we have QuakeCon, of course. Should so. be a lot, a lot of fun. I want to go around the room and everybody say like just one thing they're looking forward to in the con as we're kind of starting to wrap up. Is that interviews? What your what's yeah. your number one looking my, forward to? Um, if I get that interview, yeah, because I really they. Uh, uh, Id Software got uh, got blasted by a uh, a, um, a YouTuber from from the UK. He goes by uh, the um, developers get, uh, gaming toolkit, mm-hmm. and he did a whole five part series on how to make a game for disabled people, like what you need to do. And he did a thing on colorblindness, and he was talking about how Doom they made a thing for colorblind people, which just made the game look like what it would be for colorblind people. They didn't do anything to like change colors or anything like that. So I'm wanting to hopefully talk to see if they had rectified that for Doom Eternal. 
yeah. and whatnot. Because I mean, they've done per they've done everything. They have an easy mode. They have map mappable controls. Yeah, you know, there. I think Doom was the first game to actually have an easy mode. So, I mean, you know, I play it on normal, or at least try to. But I, you know, I'm no looking worse. forward to getting some answers. Yeah, looking forward to getting answers and getting that shirt. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> what about you, Cass? Uh, obviously the shirt. And for me, any time that I go to a, a convention that is video game heavy, I love the cosplays. I love uh, running around getting pictures with people. Um, obviously, Kat and I kind of like cosplay, I guess. Uh, there's a possibility that you will see us running around as Junkrat and Roadhog uh, from Overwatch. It's not Bethesda, so we're kind of it's like, Bethesda, mm, but at the same time, it's like... a really good video game cosplay. So, we'll is see. yours ready? I don't care. We're going to do it if his is all the way ready. All right. What about you, Nir? Uh, well, since I'm so new to everything that's going on here, I don't, I'm not going to get to go with everybody. Uh, however, when you guys are all done with going and getting all the interviews and stuff like that, if everything's done in time, since I'm kind of handling some of the social media stuff, I can go and post that stuff on social media. And if the website's done by the time everything's done, I'll get to kind of spread that out to the are world. you gonna be the like the overwatch guy that we read it like overwatch where it's like hey <laughs> headquarters <laughs> oracle yeah, so what have you got if everything goes to plan then i will look forward to getting to put all of that out there so everyone can kind of get to see it and then forcing jason to get me the shirt yeah oh, sure absolutely. i'll he's, get you the dog shirt he's not that hard to convince. if they don't sell out hopefully because the good shirts sell out quick you better well, we'll be there nine nine in the morning on thursday Jason, what do you got? Well, so you guys can just get it. As far as um, Ooh, the good thing about QuakeCon is like I love all the independent vendors that are on the floor, and that's usually where yeah. I find something. Oh yeah, somebody I usually, already reached out to us. Shout out to Dream Eater. Yeah, uh, like um, when you were there, I found the, the Robotech tabletop game, mm -hmm. and that was I love Robotech. I had no idea this thing existed, so um, that's mainly what I'm. I'm excited for finding something new because uh, there, there's. So many they, they they change out the vendors every year. It's not as large as it used to be when it was at the other uh, venue. So maybe they'll increase the size and let a couple more vendors in. But that's what I'm most finding something new that I didn't necessarily need or want, but I'm gonna own it after this show. <laughs> I'm actually excited. I've never been to QuakeCon before. Last year there was an emergency kind of situation. I had to stay home. I had all the press worked out. And I just couldn't make it for either of the days. So I'm really excited to go, but I also, I love these little more niche cons because they're so interesting. They have different art there. You see kind of more crazy cosplays there. I'm going to throw something at you. And uh, I can you wander, I, I can wander away from Jason for a while. You know, also sometimes you can get some like hot six or something, which is this Korean thing that you can't get in the States normally. Sometimes they have stuff like that at cons. I thought yeah, you said some food trucks. Hard. You'll have to show me. No, but like they'll have little like booths sometimes that are like oh, yeah. Korean snacks or something. Get right. like weird Dorito flavors and stuff. And like plenty that. of balls in a drink. These Doritos taste balls. like cotton candy and hot sauce. Yeah. They're the weirdest. Flavors. I wonder if they're gonna have uh, some like doom themed energy drinks. That no balls has that company. Yeah. Yeah, and it's since they're an official balls. sponsor, they're probably unless they're gonna have gamer fuel. No, 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 no. Anyway. Balls is here. So, can you just balls. never say that again? Balls what? balls are Safety here. Test, Everyone test. can balls, have balls. 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 Is here. <laughs> Everybody can have as many balls as they like want. That. Anyway, so that's been our show. Uh, make sure and follow us on all of our social media at Facebook. Uh, you know, all of them. It's all SCNS them. Live everywhere. Currently running on screen. Huh? Currently on screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway. But if you want to follow us individually, go ahead and where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at Dead World Tweets. Um, I talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, I just posted a wonderful article about my friend Broly Legs. He is a professional gamer. Uh, he plays Street Fighter V and he plays with his face. And I am wearing his new shirt, Faced, today. And this is going to be my tournament shirt for every tournament I go to. And thank you, Broly Legs, for making this shirt. And so, yeah, he's just a wonderful guy. I post a lot of stuff, your stuff, and, you know, Nintendo stuff. I'm all about that, that Switch life. So you can always find me about that. 
and and you just hit me up and whatnot. So yeah, it's uh, Dead World Tweets. And Dead then, World Tweets. Yeah, so it'll be cool. And cool. also, yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Bad Moon. I think it's just Bad Moon Games. Bad Moon uh, Games. Bad Moon. Like anyway, that. I don't know. You can also find me on Twitter more frequently at Doa, D-O-A Drawings, where we uh, draw qu- cartoons poorly of things casters say. Cass and I do that. And you can find me on Instagram at Better Cat, as in there was one cat. I am the better cat. It's like better than Ezra. It's really just, that's what it means. What about you? Uh, well, currently you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Cass underscore Bradley, K-A-S underscore Bradley. Um, but uh, you can also find me doing really stupid stuff uh, with Now With Milk, which is a, another comedy. It's a another YouTube channel, but it's comedy. Uh, exclusively. It's funny. It's That's the real difference. real dumb. And uh, you can find uh, Kat and I sometimes doing D&D stuff on there. But we also, this weekend, we're going to be doing SCNS d and uh, which you can find us. That will be Saturday. Yes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter under The Near Plasma. Uh, also now start at the Instagram and Twitter for Alternate Heads. So you can find that under Alternate Heads Podcast. And for Twitter, it's, I believe it's AH Vidcast, something like that. Because for some reason, Alternate Heads Podcast was taken. But Ooh. Jason probably made it and forgot about it. Well, it was too long to do alternate head you podcasts, so I couldn't do way. I couldn't do it that way, so I had to abbreviate it. Wow. No, I don't think you do actually. Jason, anyway. where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jason the X. Also, as Rob said, Friday night I will be streaming Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. I have waited ten years for this game. I'm so so happy. So He's crying. Us. He's We're, um, crying, guys. Join us. Definitely, I'm going to be dragging a lot of people into my, into this world. So, yeah. And, of course, I'm excited for D&D this weekend. And, yes, Alternate Heads podcast will be uh, up Monday after next. We got our, what, hands in a lot of baskets? I don't we even got, know what the we phrase got, is. We got things happening. Things we do. Happen. We're hopping. We like to hop. Anyway, that's been our show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, love each other, whatever he says at the end. But, as we always say... Keep, Keep on, on nerding. nerding. Yeah, just like That is our show. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to check out the live video version of this, you can find it at YouTube and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter, all at SCNS Live. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing week.